in an ancient land where holy places abound. And unholy battles have spilled the blood of countless generations. Who will seek out the places where the violence starts, in the streets and in the human heart? Who will protect the innocent ones? Only those with the courage of their convictions. I first felt a call of God to be a, a, an Anglican minister when I was about 13 years old. I think at the time I felt kind of vaguely that I had an important message to give to the world. What the message was and how it should be presented I changed a lot as I grew up. Today at the age of 76, Reverend Bill Baldwin's message is about peace and he presents it by putting his personal safety on the line in the heart of the Middle East conflict. Reverend Bill can't stop Israeli tanks or Palestinian suicide bombers, but he believes he can make a difference in the West Bank town of Hebron. I've been here uh, five times within the last two years. beautiful city with beautiful people. A lot of things happening that are very not, definitely not beautiful. When violence erupts here, it's ugly and personal. The aggressors and their victims are often very young. Uh, children have been attacked by uh, Jewish settlers on the, on the way to school or, or from school. Uh, they've also suffered some violence from uh, soldiers. We go with them and we, we watch out for them. Bill seeks to protect Hebron's children as a member of Christian peacemaker teams alongside Father Bob Holmes. Our motto is getting in the way. And uh, it is a double meaning. Um, the first Christians called themselves the way, Jesus' way. Well, getting in the way also means getting in the way of violence. And we go into very violent situations and we try to dream ways of reducing that violence. According to team member Richard Meyer, they are equal opportunity peacemakers. We'll intervene if there are Palestinian kids throwing stones. We'll try to stop them from doing that because we don't think that's sensible or effective behavior on their part. It's not the right thing to do for anyone. There's Al Fayha Girls School. You'll see some graffiti on the gate. It says death to Arabs. Yeah. By international treaty, half of Hebron is controlled by Palestinians and half by the Israeli army. The reality is something else. Hebron contains the resting place of the prophet Abraham, along with many other Judaic archeological treasures. Some Orthodox Jews fear holy sites will be defiled unless the entire old city becomes a Jewish enclave. Several hundred have come to stake their claim. They've constructed homes and apartment blocks, sometimes on property acquired legally, and sometimes not. See that uh, apartment up there with the balcony? That was a wonderful Palestinian family, and they went to the Hajj one year, the whole family. When they came back, the Israeli settlers had moved in and taken over their apartment, and were, they'd be out there on the porch with their guns and stuff, and really frightened everybody down here. Some of us think maybe a better term than settler would be uh, colonists, because, in fact, uh, the settlers are not people who have moved into empty land to pioneer but they are people who are moving into land that has been stolen from another people. In Israel, the citizenry is divided on the settlers' presence in Hebron. But most agree they must be given protection. But it's a settlement. That's why there's so many soldiers in this area. The soldiers create buffer zones by demolishing the homes of Palestinians.
Your buffer zones are impractical. They build walls. Okay, was that alley walled off when you were here? I don't think so, no. Oh, oh uh, no. This neighborhood, Abu Sneini and Carantina, uh, a lot of children from there come down to these schools too. And they used to just come out of these, well, all the streets of a city. But now this perimeter of the heart of the city has been walled off to the Palestinians who live all around it. There's a lot of attention worldwide to the building of the wall uh, around the West Bank. But in this area, there's been the walling off of Hebron for several years. When I first came here in 1999, you could walk right through here. Not anymore. This leads through to Shahada Street, which we will, we will have to go the long way around to get to Shahada Street because this is blocked off. A few more uh, barriers put up. It's a kind of normalization of the oppression. Gates through the walls are controlled by Israeli soldiers and observed by Christian peacemakers. There's, there are Palestinian school children going both ways through this checkpoint, through this metal detector, so we'll just watch for a bit and see how it's going for them this morning. Past the checkpoint in the Palestinian quarter, Israeli soldiers on rooftops keep the population under constant surveillance. The trouble is, this is an occupying army which forces every adult over the age of 16 to have an ID issued to them by the army, which then controls their life from then on. Yeah, what I'm doing is watching, make sure those guys get their passes back and that they don't get detained over there. A Palestinian without ID faces arrest and imprisonment. Right now there's about 6,000 uh, Palestinians detained in jail without trial. Uh, Palestinian people have been suffering under uh, the oppression of the occupation for many years. There are potentialities for violence uh, in the situation. Uh, in many ways, it's a very tragic situation. People are getting killed. On a side street in the Palestinian quarter, the Peacemaker team shares a modest flat. Janet is from Scotland. Uh, she is a member of the Scottish Episcopal Church. Uh, John Lyons uh, is uh, from England. He is a Quaker. Diane Rowe is our coordinator. She has been with the team longer than anybody else. This picture of Tom Fox taken hostage in, in Baghdad, and he was, he was killed. Bill is well aware peacemaking may put his life in danger. I'm not hoping for that, but you know, there, there are, are times when one has to, make, to take risks for what one believes to be right. But are these peacemakers brave or simply foolhardy? And why do these Christians care about what happens in this ugly conflict between Muslims and Jews? In the Palestinian quarter of Hebron, Reverend Bill Baldwin and his fellow Christian peacemakers watch for signs of impending violence. I don't think that we in CPT are here to teach people about solutions. We are here to stand in the way, to create room for healing, and uh, to help others who are working to find solutions, peaceful and just solutions. Until recently, Bill was not concerned about the plight of Palestinians. The uh, suffering that I learned of the Jewish people this made me uh, so sympathetic to, to the Jews that for a long time I was insensitive to what was happening to the Palestinians. I think prejudice is a terrible thing. It's so easy to lose sight of the face of another person to the point where you stereotype them and you say that all Arabs are terrorists or all Jews are terrorists and call a person a a terrorist because of the uh, nation or the race that he belongs to. And uh, this is something that needs to be overcome. 
today, thankfully. The last stragglers make it to school with no rocks thrown, no guns drawn. We find that just by being here and watching, um, people are less likely to, to be violent. We call it the grandmother effect. There are lots of things you wouldn't do if your grandmother was watching you. In Bill's case, it's more than that. During a long career, he's promoted peace in Hiroshima, among native people in Canada's north, and at a peace center on the line separating North and South Korea. I could talk to communist Koreans, uh, right-wing Koreans. The, uh, the outsider sometimes can help to uh, bring people together and uh, help, uh, help them in, in working on their own problems. But in Hebron, being an outsider has not helped Bill to bring people together. Jewish settlers rarely even talk to him. Palestinians are another story. Come inside. This is where we get our hair cut, and it's also where people meet and talk, and it's very important. That's the that's friend that's the city from here. These men believe the ultimate source of the problem is not Jewish settlers, but George Bush. I, I say he is dictator. He want to, uh, to make uh, and uh, surrender to surrender all of one in the all of world. If anyone say to Bush, no, he will attack him. He's a man. It's not only Bush. I think it is a, a problem of the human spirit that, that we, we all are capable of using violence and we all need to, we need to work against the, the violence in the world outside and also in ourselves. How Thank are you, you, sir? It is good. Are to you be all back. right? I am good. Fine. Good. Hello, Bill. Hello. How are you? <laughs> tell them about the settlement. Tell them here. You tell us. Tell us about the settlement. Well, you see, here we've got on top of this shop. It's called Abraham Abino Settlement, and we've got this fence here on top of all these shops to protect ourselves from stones and garbage they throw on top of us. People here are pretty angry, and uh, I think they have a right to be. We asked settler spokesperson David Wilder for the settler's side of the story. And I'll tell you the truth, it's initiated by both sides, okay? The kids here aren't bashful also, and they know what's happening. And uh, of course there's frustration and there's anger. Uh, if the Arabs are willing to accept a Jewish presence, both here in Hebron and here in the state of Israel, then the conflict will be able to easily come to an end, as long as there is strategic decision to try to wipe us off the map, uh, the conflict will continue because we don't have any plans to leave. Listening to David Wilder, one might think the settlers are being pushed out of Hebron. Bill sees a different picture. It was prepared by the Hebron Land Defense Committee and it shows how uh, Jewish settlements have been placed in the, throughout the Hebron district and how much of the Palestinian land has been taken. We used to go outside here to big streets, to big markets, a lot of shops, to see the vegetable and the fruit market, the cemetery. It seems to be so empty now. It's a shame. Maybe more. You guys are doing a really good job here. It's good work. Yeah. It's really good work. Hard and discouraging because it's worse every time you come back. Yeah. Really? The situation now yeah. is yeah, it's, it's worse. Now. It's quiet, but it's worse. It's quiet because they push people further out from the old city. Yeah. And, uh, Mostly, we're not seeing as much overt violence as we did even last year, you know. But it's it's a matter of matter sort of tightening the noose, you know. One might think that Palestinians would be wise to leave the old city to build new, more peaceful lives in the surrounding hills. But even here, as Reverend Bill will soon discover, there is urgent work for peacemakers. Today, on a plateau overlooking the West Bank town of Hebron, two Christian peacemakers join a demonstration in support of local shepherds. And we're meeting.
meeting with some really beautiful people, uh, Israelis and Palestinians and some internationals who are uh, working together for peace. And some bad things are happening. We're here to uh, witness against the confiscation of uh, Palestinian land. For generations, this shepherding community lived in caves carved out of these hills. But when the ruin of an ancient synagogue was discovered nearby, Israeli authorities declared the area an archaeological site. Soldiers forcibly relocated the shepherds to this rocky patch of ground and then allowed settlers to build new homes there. Recently, Israeli authorities decided the shepherds' tents are too close to the settlers' new homes. Military bulldozers are set to remove the tent village any day now. Really good to see all these people here. Uh, it, it really encourages me to know that there are so many people uh, who are together with me in a struggle that's very important to me. Sometimes people accuse me of being one-sided because I do identify very much with the Palestinians in their struggle. They may, it may seem that if I am very pro-Palestinian that that might make me anti-Israeli. I don't think that is true because uh, I think in helping the Palestinians, I'm also helping the Israelis. I was 30 years coming I mean, at the Israeli television. They wouldn't have the settlers we could make peace. We could make two states on the border of 67. And the only reason is that it's not these borders is because of the settlers. I'm from Be'er Sheva. It's my hope for Israel and for the Palestine. You know, to just live, you know, one by another, you know, side by side, normally. As the day progresses, the Israeli army presence increases. As police set up a roadblock, tempers flare. Reverend Bill and Rich join the fray, ready to get in the way. Not long ago, a similar demonstration was met with a violent response from Israeli soldiers. This peace activist was struck by a rubber bullet at close range. He suffered brain damage. At today's demonstration, will cooler heads prevail? Uh, I guess somebody's idea has been taken, and the, uh, they have to wait for them to check out the uh, check it out by telephone, and then when uh, if everything's okay, then they'll give it back to them. No one knows if the show of support will help the shepherd's cause, but at least no one was hurt today. And in this part of the world, that makes today a good day. It's now mid-afternoon, as the peacemakers return to protect children on their way home from school. They spot Israeli soldiers on the run with weapons drawn, preparing to attack. In the West Bank city of Hebron, Israeli soldiers crouch near the entrance of a Palestinian school, guns at the ready. Children walk through the line of fire, but no one shouts a warning. A soldier tosses nothing. He's pretending to toss a grenade. This isn't an attack, it's a training exercise. It's a problem when the soldiers do training exercises like this in the middle of a town with people coming and going to school. And a little disruptive and I think a little dangerous. Elsewhere in the old city, Pastor John receives an emergency call. He rushes to the market area where he confers with Pastor Bob. See, it's actually quite normal. You'll see, quite normal, you'll see the soldiers up there. Yeah. That's no, their... I was telling this kind of joke. Okay. Uh, they, it's uh, one of their uncles up there. This is not a training exercise. Israeli soldiers have detained several Palestinian youths. The soldier asked these boys their names and their, and their ages, and then he took those IDs. If they don't get them back, they risk imprisonment. 
John phones a lawyer in case the boys need legal representation. And I wish, I wish everybody who was carrying a gun believed that it was a better way. <laughs> what this child makes of the scene is anybody's guess. Soldiers questioned four teenagers who were caught entering the Israeli quarter through a hole in a wall. Are there regulations about soldiers searching, doing body searches on children under 14 years of age? It turns out the boys just thought the hole would make a great shortcut home from school. When I see boys being held at gunpoint uh, against a wall in the market, it makes me very sad. It uh, makes me sad, especially since very often uh, these are boys whom I know and whom I consider as friends. Uh, unfortunately, I have to admit that sometimes my emotions are blunted because I've become accustomed to that situation. It's become normal for me. Uh, but it is a sad situation. I'm sad for the boys themselves. I'm also sad for the soldiers who may very often are not much older than the boys. And under different circumstances, they might be friends. The peacemakers reflect on what has been a very long day. People have mixed views. Nobody, my daughter's not very happy. She thinks the work is, is good, but just doesn't want her mother to do it, so. Um, I, I do find it difficult. I find it difficult when the settlers call me a Nazi. I'm old enough to remember what real Nazis were. I lived as a Jew through the Holocaust years, and they didn't, most of them. Um, but, and yes, and it is painful. That, that side of it is painful for me. Has anything gotten better here? I think so. I think the... I think the network of people, Israelis and Palestinians and internationals who are passionately concerned about maybe a better vision, mm -hmm. I think that's getting stronger. Good. Good. I think when you are engaged in working for peace and with other people who are also working for peace, that uh, we are changed within ourselves. That it, it does have a transformative in, uh, effect on us. ourselves in relation to the world, in relation to other people and to God. I think this is a, a wonderful place to work in the cause of peace. <laughs>